Welcome to Buzz in the Tower, a podcast dedicated to the movies of the 1980s and the 1990s. I am one of two of your hosts, Mo Shapiro, joining me. And I'm the other three. Across from me <laughs> in a bright tangerine colored shirt. It's tie dye. Whatever it is. It's the dead of the sphere. Max Sanders, welcome to the party. You've you're, been in the sphere? You've only been back one week and I already yeah. don't want you back anymore. I want to live in the sphere. I know. You do live in the sphere. Will you, will you come to the dead show with me in the no. August? Did we talk about how the movie sphere is like terrifying? I love That movie freaked me out yeah. so bad. I love yeah, it. Yeah, I do too. It's 90s. It's good. Samuel L. Jackson choking on calamari. <gasps> Remember he's all freaked out? Remember yeah. when you choked on the show? <laughs> On All water, time. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've got the black lung. Buzz in the Tower can be found on all podcast players. So swing on by the old Spotify, Apple Podcast, you name it. We're on it. Leave a five star review. Leave some notes for us. Something positive. If it's not positive, I will find you. Head on over to YouTube.com where you can check out the actual video of the podcast where you can see the shirt that I mentioned. We're almost at a thousand. We're so close. And that's the only goal I gave you for the year, and you have dragged your feet all year doing. I've been working on it. It's hard. Work faster. Uh, it's YouTube. <laughs> YouTube.com at Buzz in the Tower backslash at Buzz in the Tower. You can also check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash Buzz in the Tower. We recently had a purchase from our merch store. It doesn't yeah. happen very often. I no. forgot the guy's name. Bradley something. Up. Bradley something. Did you buy Small a shirt? Tail. Small tail. Small tail. shirt. Did you? No comment. Yeah. Did you buy a shirt? No. no oh, okay. I, <laughs> I was like, good for you. His name's Bradley. I don't know. I think he's I talking know. to you. You know, the, the movie with the bus that has to go, you know, the movie where the bus is fast. <laughs> Uh, so swing by the store, pick up officially licensed merchandise. Merchandise. Uh, do you know they're making a sequel to Spaceballs, by the way? What, is Mel Brooks doing it? Yeah, he's involved. He's like 95. I know, I know. And like, what's his face? Lone Star's dead. Yeah. John Candy's dead. Yeah, like, what the hell? <laughs> oh, dude, no I, one else is famous. Rick Moranis doesn't act anymore. They, God, that, I would... I'd be interested in seeing it if they could get him out of retirement, but I just... Is that, if they get Rick Moranis, I'm in. Is that the movie that they would get him? Don't you think Ghostbusters would have been where they had more of a shot to get him? No, because that's not like he wasn't the star. He's like the fifth or sixth lead. I know, but to get back into it. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't He know. was in a gin commercial with Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was weird. Like, Ryan, how do you, how do you unretire know. for that? I don't know. It's Ryan Reynolds. You just look into it's his Canada, eyes. It's Canadian. Yeah. Yeah. Look into my eyes. He's going to do a John Candy biopic. Yeah, Ryan Reynolds is. Uh, I think they're doing one. Yeah, that's you, you, we talked about that. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. All right, anyways, Max, back to the show. We, yep. Well, what do we? Oh, social media, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Our our tag is at Buzz in the Tower. B U Z Z N the Tower. So please check us out on those as well. I think that covers everything. Last week's show, we did St. Elmo's Fire. Say it. Say it. <laughs> Peter Byrne, St. Elmo's Fire, that cold so room. It's such a silly room movie. so cold. <laughs> can't speak English. <laughs> But what came from that is a conversation about Joel Schumacher, which yep. then led to you and I deciding on today's topic, which is Flatliners. Flatliners is a movie. It is. It's a movie. So is it the best idea for a movie ever? It's pretty like in a, like your elevator pitch. You know what I mean? Like the bus can't go below 55 miles an hour. Uh, yeah. Alien in the jungle. Arnold's there. Yeah. Med students kill themselves to see what's after death. It's freaking aw- It's like one of the best quick synopsis of a movie you've ever seen speaking, or heard of. Speaking of synopsi, yeah. <clears throat> five medical students embark on a daring and dangerous experiment to gain insight into the mystery of what lies beyond the confines of life. Yeah. The bold adventure begins when they trigger near-death experiences by stopping their hearts from short for short periods of time. As their trials become more perilous, each must confront the sins from their past while facing the paranormal consequences of journeying to the other side. Gonna take break on through to the <laughs> others. So, uh, to your question, you always like to start with a big bang. Yeah, you ask the big questions. It's, it's a, it's a really cool idea when you learn about how it was written mm. that it was from a real life near death experience, and that's what the writer kind of borrowed from to tell the story. Yeah, it's, it's like it's when pre- people read. Cool. It's like when people read about Point Break, like like bank robberies, and then decide to do that movie. <clears throat> I. I have mixed feelings about this movie. I really do love Flatliners, mm. but I I openly recognize it could have been so much better than it was. Nine, I'm in nine thousand percent agreement. Like it's the most dichotomous dichotomous movie because it's all sizzle and no steak. Like, yeah, Schumacher loves the imagery, yeah. like the concept of it, but you lose the plot with like they don't explain the other side whatsoever, and it, like they could have made it darker and scarier. Yeah, and also the characters are all one note, which is fine. I, 
The, you, so it's almost like when whenever we evaluate movies, we talk about there's the ingredients in the cake. Yep. Right. And so for this movie or for other movies, you've got the writing, the acting, the cinematography, the story. And then sometimes there's like a little bit of magic. The timing is perfect mm. or something takes place like there's, there's serendipity that makes it go over the top. And you don't understand the why this worked. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Karate Kid. Karate Kid was an amazing movie, yeah. and all of a sudden, dojos pop up all across America. Are you ready for the last season, by the yeah, way? Yeah, yeah. Cobra Kai. Oh, man. In Flatliners, it feels like one of the rare times where everything was perfectly aligned, and they didn't capitalize it on as much as they should. And that's not to say that it wasn't successful. Yeah, I mean, like $65 million. On 25, right? Yeah. The cast was outstanding. They caught the right people at the right time. Outstanding. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, this is Julia Roberts the same year she comes out with Pretty Woman. Oh, my God. Yeah. You know, Kiefer Sutherland is Kiefer Sutherland. Like, I, tell me something he's Does he not play the same role in everything? It doesn't matter yeah. to me. I, yeah. he's, he's great. Yeah. Um, Billy Baldwin before... Uh, before he was not important anymore. Yeah. And it was just... But, I mean, I, I, he was great in this. Yeah. I, so and the Baconator. The cat, yeah, Kevin Bacon. The, the story's fantastic. Yep. I mean, to, to your point... I think of there's a handful of movies that explore the what happens when you're dead. Yeah. And what is the one with Albert Brooks, Defending Your Life? That's a great one. Defending Your Life's What Dreams May Come and Flatliners are probably my three favorite. So the OA is a near-death experience TV show, which is fantastic. Oh, I've never seen it. He's There's a doctor who's like killing people over and over again with near-death experiences and seeing like if he can find the particles to the afterlife and multiverse stuff. Oh, wow. Stuff. Okay. It's, it's very weird. Look at that. That's very yeah. interesting. Um, but those three are great. But even in, I mean, even for the time, a Jacob's Ladder. So I was just about to say, in 1990, you have Ghost, yep. Flatliners, and Jacob's Ladder. So yeah. it's the perfect. Again, all of the conditions were set perfectly for the perfect storm. You have the, the hotness that year was these kinds of movies. Mm. So obviously, there's something that's again, it's like Avengers coming out and like all of those movies, superhero movies, fitting into a five to six year period that worked really well. So there was a, a craving for this type of s- film. Yep, and. You you watch it and you enjoy it and then you're kind of you know what it actually reminds me of is the complaint about contact which was a great movie and then you're like the alien was her dad and you're kind of like let down by what the alien is but that movie at least I understood the plot this one uh, what is death like they all see something they have to rectify something in themselves to have death stop chasing them oh I is God mad at them you you really this is to me this is the plot's too simple. This is all about accountability. Okay. The, the film, the film's ultimate theme is accountability. So it's so simple, I didn't get it. Yeah. Okay. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> the, Wookiees live to four hundred years old. Thought, what was you had a couple of Wookiee facts this morning and Star Wars facts? What were they? Uh, Jabba the Hutt was choked by Leia by the Force because his uh, species is super strong. Yeah. So it doesn't make sense that Leia could just choke him to death. Sure. With Leia. <laughs> That's something I never want to see again. And Wookiees live to be how old? 400. Good work. So, like, Harrison Ford was like uh, Chewbacca's, like, third dog. Yeah. Yeah. Think about that. It's great. You ever, you ever Googled uh, a Wookiee who's uh, without their without their fur? No. It's terrifying. I, I'm good, dude. Do it. I'm really good. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate you taking a hard right turn on our episodes per usual. Oh, and also uh, Ewoks taste like salami. Good. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you made that up. Um, <laughs> the, the thing about Flatliners that leaves you wanting more is exactly what you brought up. The story is such a cool idea yeah. that you're flirting with this gray space. And there's parts of this movie that that I wish they'd leaned into more. Julia Roberts' relationship with that old dying patient, there was like a, yeah, that was a cool. mystical nature to it that was really cool. Yeah. But like, here's the part that leaves me. I, and I, I, It's very rare that you and I, I was really surprised how I felt rewatching this movie because I remember really liking this movie a lot. And I felt, I still I felt like it. I felt bad because you were so excited last week. I was yeah. like, is he going to be pissed at me? It's not bad. It's <laughs> not a bad movie. Like, I would, I would absolutely, if someone came to me and was like, hey, like, I'm looking for high art yeah. American Gothic film from yeah. the early 90s, I'd be like, go watch Flatliners. No, that, but it drags. There's more, there's points. It, it just, you, you have, so Kiefer Sutherland's character is haunted. The, again, they could have played on this so much more, yeah. is, is haunted. By this, like little kids yeah. in like horror film roles are terrifying. Right. There's nothing scarier, yeah. right? Like or the mean black come girl. play yeah. with yeah. us, yeah. So like you have that, and yeah. there's a physicality, and everything else. What was Billy Baldwin's lesson? He was haunted <laughs> by images of the women who he videotaped without their knowledge. Like yeah. he got <laughs> off basically scot free. His wife didn't even call the cops or anything. She's just like, "I'll see you later." Fiance, yeah. fiance, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, but that, that's my whole point is like, and there just isn't this. I, I loved the 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 Julia Roberts. 
you know, she, her father came back from war, was yeah. addicted to heroin. She walked in on him shooting up. Yep. And because of how humiliated he was and because his life was what it was, he killed himself. Yep. And that she had always harbored guilt about that having to do with her. But even that reconciliation, this is where they missed. They missed by not creating more depth in the actual reconciliation with the exception of Kiefer. Kiefer's was great. But then you see a, a Ruffers get hurt. You know, I don't like when Ruffers yeah. get hurt. I feel sad for that dog. Yeah. I don't know, man. It was an interesting movie. I I I've absolutely it's a good rewatch, but it, no, caught, you, it caught me off guard. You watch it for the imagery. So the director of photography is John DeBont. Yeah. Do you know who that is? He did. God, why can I remember what he did? So he's the cinematographer for Die Hard, Black Rain, Hunt for Red October, Hunt ba- for October. That's Basic what I was Red, of. Basic Instinct, and Lethal Weapon 3. Mm-hmm. He also directed Speed, Twister, and Laura Croft. Speed. So there's all these like fo- <laughs> there's all these like Intense focus in shots, and it's very uneasy. Yeah. There's not many jump scares, but you think it's going to be scarier than it is. And like Joel Schumacher, who used to be a window dresser for like big New York uh, department stores, yeah. like even the graffiti behind the walls with like the images of people staring at you, yeah, it's like terrifying. Yeah. And they even uh, like when when they're dissecting the bodies in the med school. Where is that med school? It's like a gothic 1920s mansion. But I kind of like. That. No, no, I'm saying it's awesome. Yeah. But that, that's what he focused on. You know what I mean? He's like he was in love with, and I guess. Uh, the uh, the place where they killed themselves. There's all these uh, gothic imagery of gods b- above them. Yeah, and they did like this weird red tracking light below. So it's like heaven is watching and hell yeah. is underneath. Yeah. So cool even the, even Halloween costumes. Oh my they're god! Not, yeah, like, they're not like nobody's dressed up as a Ghostbuster. No, it was like, like they're all very. It was like a model. I was know. Like, Ugh. And and, and, uh. and like the dance scenes are like from the Matrix dance yeah. scenes. Yeah, like, they it's are. Just very yeah. weird. Um, <laughs> the world's ending, but we're gonna have the world's r- but, largest but, rave. But yeah. tell me that this also isn't exactly when you're watching the Lost Boys and they're at like the, and you got you know Tim Capello playing the saxophone. Yeah. Oh, I still believe. <laughs> and they're in the beach and they're all like, uh, have you ever been to a beach bonfire like that where everyone's no. like gorgeous and just writhing with yeah. each other? Yeah. It's like wild, yeah. you know. And that's Schumacher. That's in his his brain is very goth rave yeah right? it's just wild well he just liked he cares more about the imagery like it reminds me of aaron sorkin alec baldwin asked him like how would a surgeon you know perform this he goes i don't know just make it look cool yeah and it's like schumacher's like you know what i like make it look cool yeah yeah <laughs> it's like uh yeah i mean he's like like how michael bay is with action yeah like explosions <laughs> <laughs> he's just like bayham God. yeah um so during pre-production the actors all worked with a uh, medical technical advisor ruth Acorn, Acom, sorry. He tutored them on medical procedures. There is an element to this mm. that the, the the white knuckledness of this, yeah. where like they're dying and it's getting. I, I do really love the the commoditization of that, life. That they're like gambling. Two minutes, yeah. two and a half minutes. It I'm is like, pretty cool, it, it's yeah. pretty wild, right? But the thing is, there should be more stuff happening in the afterlife. Like all that happened is things strung across longer. Yeah. Like there should have been like, oh no, the person who went two minutes and thirty seconds has more imagery coming towards right. them that's like evil right. or like three minutes they have like an insatiable need to kill themselves again do you know what it, i mean like it should have like built up it didn't go any further it i you know it's funny i'm going to contradict myself because as we're complaining about this yeah. one of my biggest movie complaints also is where they over explain how it works i love a good uh synopsis or uh what's it called uh like a plot dump right yeah but like they don't, I, yeah. And maybe is that a good thing? Like, is it okay sometimes that like they don't specifically explain what metichlorines are and how the force actually works? It and, can and be if the mystery is worth it. If you're just still intrigued, I'm not still intrigued by the afterlife after this movie. I don't know with what they were experiencing. Yeah, it's like your stuff comes back to haunt you. Yeah, and like it seems peaceful. But I, I also think the idea that like I, again maybe I'm reading into this more than they meant to for the movie, but. There's an element of this that begs the question, were they ever even dealing with the afterlife? Or is this just what happens when you harbor guilt for your actions? Yeah. And that's what bubbles up. Yeah. Like, this is the last second of your life. Like, American Beauty, it lasts forever. Yeah. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It gets you, gets you to scratch your head. God, American Beauty, what a great movie that is. Um, Kiefer Sutherland described this movie as The Breakfast Club Dies. <laughs> it's so good. Or, and and St. Elmo's <laughs> Funeral. I'm so mad that I maybe picked that up. In my travels, because I that was my name for the uh, series that was going to continue Saint Elmo's Fire. Remember, when really? We did, remember when we did that when we we did a like thirty years later. What, what movie would we do a oh, sequel to? Yeah, Mine yeah, was Saint yeah, Elmo's, Elmo's funeral. funeral. You're right. So did I steal from Kiefer? Probably. Yeah. I mean, I put nothing past you. You're yeah. a scoundrel. Val Kilmer turned down the role of Nelson Wright. He would have been awesome. 
how excited would that have made you? I mean, but I wouldn't. Uh, there's not the performances of the actors and the actresses in this movie. There's nobody who I would be like, I didn't like them. They Kiefer, didn't work. Kiefer's out well. great. They're all great. I want to know how he got that apartment. Like I know, he right? is like That's the most. A, I know. Yeah. He comes from money. You can kind of get the feeling that he comes from money. So he got he got adopted though, right? Because yeah. he went to a boys' home. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, because he got thrown out for yeah. mur- murdering that kid. By the way, I love. The- <laughs> Jesus. That's what I was like. I also love like the, the like it's it's not even like everybody's got like, okay, like Kevin Bacon, you know, made fun of a poor black girl and Julia He's Roberts. A good life. Julia, that was his only- and Julia Roberts walked in on her dad shooting yeah. up heroin, which is terrible. Yeah. And Kiefer murdered a boy, <laughs> like threw rocks at him and killed him. Like yeah. that's I love they didn't show Oliver, Oliver Platt stealing a pastrami sandwich from his overweight babysitter. What is the show that he's on as a West Wing? Yeah, no, 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 as the a bear. therapist. Oh no, no, no. Uh, he's he's like a doctor. There's some uh, medical show that he's on. Really? No, I don't know. All the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love him. He could read the phone book to me. He's good. He you was great. I thought he was good in this. You got to have that one character that's like the reality with the, touch with reality with the dictaphone and yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he comes from money. You can feel it. It's like him and Philip Seymour Hoffman always seem like the prep school kid. Yeah. Who thinks they're better than you? And they're this heavy set kind of smart they date well all their lives yeah yeah, yeah. yeah i love it <laughs> you do because it's you except you now you're not heavy set yeah short of that it's literally <laughs> you um they're more well spoken yeah no i agree i agree yeah. uh the washington post described this movie as a brat pack neo-gothic that plays like frankenstein in reverse that's really good i thought it was kind of cool yeah it makes sense it th- wrap your head around this for a minute okay it's 1990 when this comes out yep and people are still saying brat pack this yeah. is this is like five years, six years after the article. What was the article? 84? 85. 85 years later. Yeah. And and in this movie, there's only one member. No, there's no, no, no members there's of no the members, Brad Pack. Yeah. yeah, there's no members. Kiefer's adjacent question mark. And Julia's not. No. Oh, uh, no, you're right. I'm, that's there's it. None. There's no. none. That's yeah. how powerful that stupid thing was. Is that yeah. you still have them saying that it's and how annoyed must they be? To like, I, you have the initial annoyance of like your Andrew McCarthy, yeah. your all those guys. Like, then, I didn't even know that. Then like Kiefer <laughs> Sutherland was like, I wasn't even a part of their garbage films. Like, don't I was in you know Stand uh, by Me, Stand by Me, Lost yeah. Boys. Yeah, yeah. He is so good in Lost Boys. That's I watched Lost Boys a million times. Yeah. Oh, I still believe those aren't noodles, Michael. Boop, boop, boop. It's the best Corey Haim performance ever. Easy now. Dream a little dream. That's a terrible movie. I know you hate Dream a Little Dream. Why would you I, I make Why it. would you make uh, Freddy Krueger like a PG movie? That's basically uh, they're, what they're doing a new Krueger, by the way. With who? I, I it might be a series, and it might be the origins. No, I don't. I'm down. I don't. I, horror film. You know, I'll say this. I think horror films yep. of all the genres have the most latitude to go out and do that. Yeah, because they can be scary. Regardless. And there's and there's also a campiness that exists in them where you're not touching a masterpiece. And like I've seen re Boots of horror films where I've been like, that's fantastic. I, the uh, the what's her face? Not Jodie Foster. My God. Uh, Steve come Martin. On, come on, come on. The beautiful woman from True Lies and Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie Halloween. Lee Curtis. Halloween. Halloween. Thank you. Yeah. The, the her like the, the Halloweens that have come out the last like three or four. H two Halloween. Or they are, no, they're, I don't know if it's H two. The last three that have come out have been fantastic. Really? Oh, okay. they're great. They're yeah. great. They're yeah. great. And she makes it. She's great. Yeah, I guess I'm. I'm never mad when a new Alien movie comes out. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like don't mind them. that at all. Yeah. Where I where I get. I think where I have trouble with reboots, yeah. which perfectly leads into our topic for next mu- uh, next week. What are we? Oh, Axel. Yeah. We're gonna yeah. do Axel. Axel F. When to date, the only movie I can think of where there are two properties where they have taken the original property, mm-hmm. excluding horror films, they've yep. taken the original property and they've really done something special with it. And I've been like, all right, yeah. Maverick and Cobra Kai. Nobody else has cracked that code, Max. Okay. So Give me an example of like Is Dune Counters, that's a reboot. That's a total reboot. Okay. Uh, but I still I still actually wouldn't even mind saying like that it counts. No, but it's it, they told the same story. Yeah, it's the same so, movie. It's so you're saying like re-shot. 25 years later they remit they like follow the characters. Right. God. It's a hard question on the fly. The Hobbit? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh Godfather 3 is okay. You're good. You think about it. Um <laughs> So it's hard on the spot. So interesting, right? So um, have you seen Dying Young? No, so this I haven't. Is a, this is a Schumacher film with yeah. Julia Roberts. It's a good, very good movie. Is she dying young? No. Oh. The, her, the boyfriend is, or the oh. guy is. Schumacher admitted that he felt he was the wrong director for Dying Young, which was in 91. And he said the only reason he did it was as a personal favorite to Julia Roberts. And he had loved working with her in Flatliners. Mm. The 
the relationships that everybody, so, you know, Kiefer Sutherland and Julia Roberts start dating as a result of this yeah, movie. They do. And they break up and she marries Lyle Lovitz, right? Yeah, but John, she, John she left Kiefer at the altar for Jason Patrick. Oh, yeah. That's how the runaway bride thing for That's her right. started. That's right. Yeah. Or it might be vice versa. No, no, it's this. Oh, it's this. Yeah. I think. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Um, so this is the first of two collaborations with Kevin Bacon and Kiefer Sutherland. Do you know what the second one is? Oh, my God. Come on. Uh, give me a clue. Did you order the Code Red? Oh, A Few Good Men. Yeah. I will tell you right now, yeah. A Few Good Men might be in my top 10 films of all time. Yeah, it's Sorkin. It's un- un- unbelievable. It's incredible. Yeah. I've watched that movie as much as I've watched The Goonies. So I've become weirdly mm. attached to it. You don't say. Like, I watch it and I just anticipate Jack Nicholson happening and I can't focus on anything else. The <laughs> The interview with uh, who plays Weinberg. Who's the actor? I can't think of his name right now. Kevin Pollack? Thank you. Yeah. Is it Weinberg? Is yeah. that his name? I don't know. I think it's- The fact we, that I got it. I, that's yeah. incredible. So Kevin Pollack is being interviewed about um, A Few Good Men. And he's talking about you know Jack Nicholson, his incredible acting, and how during the scene where he's like, will you Weinberg? And just like the <laughs> undertones of anti-Semiticness behind it. Like listening to him say it is so funny. I'm kind of butchering the story, but- we're all over the map, as usual. This movie was nominated for an Oscar. Uh, it was the best sound effects, and it lost to Hunt for Red October. Which was also John DeBont. He I lost know. himself. I know. That's, that's pretty a good, ball. That's a pretty sweet uh, Super Bowl. How do you feel about Red October? I love the movie. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's, you have to kind of ignore certain things. Like, <laughs> Sean Connery's accent? Yeah, the Scottish, <laughs> Scottish <laughs> Russian accent, but it's a good uh, movie. It's, I mean, uh, but that's all, the, that's all the Jack Ryan movies. You know that, right? That's like... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the same character. Yeah, yeah, from, like, from whatever that's the Alec, are. right? Baldwin, yeah, just yeah. being the Jack Ryan guy. Yeah, yeah. And later, Jim it's from Harrison the Office. Harrison Ford. Well, then it goes Harrison Ford. Yeah. Then it goes Jim from the Office. Yeah. So you know uh, the defib pads that they yeah. did. That doesn't actually. That's not what you're supposed to do when someone's like flatlining like that. Apparently. Go on. Uh, it's called an AED, by the way. Oh no, that's not an AED, but it's the same concept. Hey, as one an person AED. in this room has been defibbed, and you have. That's right. Yeah, we're defibbed. So by the way, it doesn't hurt at all. Feels great. Your body just goes from here to here. I recommend it for anybody. <laughs> go out and do it. <laughs> it was fun. Oh, Max. Uh, let me see. They did it to set your heart rate back on normal. Pace, yeah, my right? heart was going nanners. Yeah, it's yeah. going two sixty a minute. Yeah, I'm good now. Yeah, are you? <laughs> <laughs> now my heart goes like forty minutes. Define <laughs> good. <laughs> I got married. You did. Yeah, you sure did. And yeah, uh, let's see. You looking it up? Nope. <laughs> you just got to trust me. Kevin, but apparently the mouth-to-mouth thing, too, when you're breathing in, that's incorrect. If you have the breather pump, you wouldn't do the mouth-to-mouth instead of it. It's like blowing up an air mattress. Yeah, you'd use with the pump over the mouth. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, like, the, they that's did it for, basic CPR. Yeah, 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 they did it for dramatic effect. Oh, sure. Yeah. A little lip-to-lip. Yeah. Um, Julia Roberts could now, s- me something, Now, something also interesting, uh, when you're performing CPR, um, they're moving away from even doing that. Uh, it's, really? Yeah, it's it's found that like really it's not the the rescue breaths are not nearly as important as just the pumping of the heart. The pumping of the heart is what's moving the oxygen throughout the body and making sure you don't go brain dead. Have you done that? No, oh. I've never had to perform. I have to get certified in every yeah, year. Yeah, I've never had to perform from CPR. Oh man, yeah, Pretty exciting. I don't want to do. We that. should do a YouTube short of you giving me CPR. I'm not giving you CPR. Wendy Peppercorn. <laughs> <laughs> So good. I'll wear my best uh, red single. <laughs> we should wear a single piece or a two singlet. Piece? I think singlet, it was singlet. Yeah. yeah. Um, God, you're an idiot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Bacon's film debut, twelve years earlier, was in National Lampoon's Animal House. Have you seen Animal House yeah. yet? Okay, I wasn't sure if you. I'm a seen zit. It. Um, and in that movie, it was featured with co-star Kiefer Sutherland's father, Donald Sutherland. R.I.P. Yeah. He's one of the best actors of all time, I think. Donald? Yeah. Yeah, he's really good. Because, I mean, you think Backdraft, like how crazy he is. Backdraft. So we're going to do Axel Foley next week. I want to do Backdraft the week after. Sweet. Yeah. It's time. Yeah. Ordinary People is one of my all-time movies. Yeah. What else? He was in... uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. No, you know what I loved him in? Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah. Christy Swanson. No, he's great. Yeah, he's really good. Like, he seemed like an A-level actor who was willing to do whatever. Yeah. Like, like JFK, he gives the monologue. That's like the best part of the movie. Yeah. There's something about him that just seems like serious, but he, uh, he's in Beer Fest. Yeah. <laughs> as uh, he's, pop accessi- up. he's accessible. Yeah. He makes Profs. himself accessible. I know. He's, <laughs> yeah. he's very funny. People played that for his funeral, and I was like, that's really sad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Peter Filardi's screenplay, I think I told you this, was inspired by the near-death experience of a friend under- undergoing a medical treatment, yeah. which is like 
I think it's again pretty cool that there's some connection to this actual concept, and that's what motivated him to put the script. It, there was a bidding war over it. I could see that. It's a great. I mean, it's a great. Like, do, you, do you know what script he also wrote uh, that came out uh, about five years later? The Craft. Oh my God, I this love guy's the dark. Craft. I yeah. like how dark this guy is. The Craft is awesome. Yeah, the Craft is great. That definitely formed my. I you the, the Craft is like it's it's all about you. Yeah, it's, yeah. You calm down. Sharks right now. landing Jesus. on the just ocean. calm down. Calm yourself down right now, please. Loading. Uh, more facts. What do you got? Any facts about this movie? Uh, Nicole Kidman uh, was thought of for Rachel Manis. Could have okay. been good. Yeah, she could have yeah. been good. Yeah, Michael Douglas produced this movie. Yeah. He has a serious producing uh, prowess, actually, though. Which later he was, what Schumacher film had Michael Douglas starring in it? Had him starring in it? Yeah. Uh, oh, Falling Down. Falling Down. Thank yeah. you. Which you love and I don't understand. Yeah, well, because you've never had a real job. <laughs> yeah, if yeah. you had a real job for like a week. <laughs> Actually, Falling Down, it's so funny. I should put you in a nine to five for two weeks and you come back and be like, I totally get it. Yeah. Totally get Falling Down. I come in with a buzz cut and you're like, <laughs> In a briefcase and you're like, hey, <laughs> I just want my McDonald's breakfast. Why won't they serve it? Uh, let's see. So they were real. <laughs> Big Daddy. Uh Schumacher said he wanted to surround uh, the movie with a very visually exciting and interesting world. So the set designs atmosphere were symb- symbolically representative of man's eternal struggle with death. So like there's all these things of like heaven and hell, yeah. angels and demons yeah, yeah. and like the gothicness and like, I mean, it doesn't look like any medical school. It doesn't, it's it's filmed in Chicago. They don't ever say what city it's in. No. It's kind um, of one of like those unspoken they're like either, seven cities. They were either in Chicago or they are on the lot in California. Yeah. And it, it, to that, to that point, y- you largely suspend reality like the dark and dankness of the your example of the classrooms that they're in yeah and they're doing the i mean it's like there's no hygienic area or space no the buildings look like they're condemned the hospital that they're doing all their work out of looks like an abandoned hospital like it's it's yeah and then like the circuits are frying because they don't have good electricity to it it's just it's an interesting movie yeah but like i said schumacher just loves the style of it you know he doesn't care if it's like plausible you know the one part of this movie that i do think is interesting to think about is because like if billy baldwin's sins aside because yeah. those are the easiest to track yep. well i guess like killing a kid is, is pretty easy <laughs> to track too but imagine if that's actually what death was like like i don't even know where i would start cataloging the things that i have overwhelming guilt for i mean you you're you're a monster i yeah. mean, I, I mean I, you better hope you never die you I better would, hope you live forever I, mine are entertaining <clears> like <throat> C level felonies or yeah. misdemeanors. Yeah. So it's like I just get some popcorn and watch. I don't think you'd feel that way. You don't think so? I think there's a few I think there's a few women and men that would pop back in your life and be like, I've never ero- You did this to me, Max. I've never no one thinks about me at night thinking like they I ruined their life. I don't know. Nope. I- no, no, uh-uh. I don't, know. No. Uh-uh. I don't know. Yeah. I agree with that. You, on the I other. think about that yeah. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> it's just me sitting in a dark room with a microphone. <laughs> you ruined my life, Max. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, I this is my like nightmare scenario. Yeah, I think I've told you I tried to like reconcile with a couple kids I bullied when I was in high school, and it did not go very well. Yeah, it's always weird. I mean, I, I'm glad the Kevin Bacon one went well. Yeah, but I had a feeling that that, that wasn't going to go no, the way he was. Planning. It doesn't go that way. No, and Kiefer's in the car. He's like, "Hi, we're two psychopaths." And yeah. We just want to come inside. Yeah. yeah, it's like, yeah. How about the fact that he's freaking out in the car, and Kevin Bacon grabs the rock to break the window, and the back of the truck was a soft lid. He could yeah. have just like opened the tarp or, and gone in there. Or that Kiefer didn't honk the horn, yeah. even though he told him to honk the horn if he was freaking out. Uh, there's a lot going on in that yeah. scene. By the way, why does Kevin Bacon have a World War II like hospital truck? <laughs> <laughs> it makes perfect sense to me. And he belays out of the window. He's yeah. like, I'm out of here, man. That, that's the other thing, too, when he gets thrown out or he yeah. gets suspended. Like, yeah. uh, he, did he do anything really that bad? He saved the woman. He saved life. life. He saved life, Max. He's a lifesaver. Long, uh, long hair Kevin Bacon's my favorite bacon, I think. I like my bacon well done. <laughs> uh, any other, you want to talk about favorite scenes and then we'll go to characters? Yeah. I All mean, right. the first death is always the coolest. Yeah. Where Kiefer's like, Keep my body at like 200 cc's of heat, and then bring me back up to 93 degrees. 200 cc's of heat. I don't know. There's a <laughs> there's a blanket involved. It's just temperature. That's just temperature. Yeah. Cc's is Can like is like a, like a vial of like yeah. an actual liquid. You can't liquid heat. Give me 20 cc's of heat. I there, you can buy liquid heat at a CVS. I think it's different. I don't think they're injecting <laughs> themselves with liquid heat. It's not like Ben Gay. It's <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal <laughs> comes in. I use liquid heat for my back. And keep yourself and stays alive. Oh, Max, that's really good. Yeah. That's really good. Um, my favorite scenes. It's a good day to die, like right at the beginning. Yeah. I the the entire Kiefer's last death 
like flashing and and that that whole dream sequence i think it's really difficult to represent what dreams really feel like because mm. there's almost a, a, a blurry inconclusiveness to dreaming like it's very rare that you have a crisp dream where the details are really focused on it's it's usually very schumacher-esque right yeah so i liked that last one where the confrontation with the kid and the but i still and that's everything too by the way like i i had to go back and google this i'm sorry i know i'm leaving from favorite scene to a different topic why was billy baldwin's like reconciliation in the real world where everybody else's reconciliation was in the death world i don't know because he didn't reconcile with any of these women he didn't apologize there yeah. was not, it, it was seeing them everywhere but it was the fact that his fiance left him that was like the movie. The movie didn't have enough time for him. I guess. Yeah, not. I had a dream last night that I had a pie eating contest with Jared McCain. He's the 16th pick of the Philadelphia 76ers. Jesus Christ, Max. Okay. Uh, I th- I mean, how do how does one reply to such a thing? Uh, let's talk about the director, the writer, and the actors. Yeah, talk Sh- to me about Schumacher. Like you said, fashion window dresser, and got into movies in his early 30s, which is crazy. Yeah. That's like the coolest thing ever. He's good friends with David Fincher, which was awesome. He like, passed away. He did, 2020. Yeah. 2020. Yeah. Uh, and like we said, his movies are all fun. Lost Boys, Falling Down, The Client. I've never seen The Client. I've never seen it either. Yeah, it sounds good. Mm-hmm. Batman Forever is my slept on Batman movie. It's okay. Jim Carrey? Yeah. Tommy okay. Lee Jones? It's okay. I love that they hated each other. Have Val Kilmer as Batman? I, I, that's really the sweet spot yeah. for you. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of funny. Nicole remember, Kidman was gorgeous. Remember when Chris O'Donnell takes out the uh, Batmobile? Vague. Max, it, I haven't seen that movie. Yeah, in a and he saves years. a girl. He like kisses her in an alleyway. Yeah. Like there's like a punk group that I swear to God, the backdrop, uh, the backdrop is the same backdrop from Flatliners with like the three heads looking at them. Why didn't you look it up? I wasn't sure. <laughs> then look it up. I will. Yeah. All right. Great. Great story. <laughs> great story, Max. Continue. Time to kill. Continue. Which, yeah. which is actually like his. I action. loved the time to kill. Uh, do you go back to it though? It's just so rough. No. You're beating the crap out of a chick. Correct. Yeah. But I do like the movie a lot. Yeah. It's very. It's Dr. also what it's in my list of one of 10 books I've read. Yeah, I bet Dr. Disrespect likes it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Continue, please. Uh, eight millimeter. Yeah. Uh, Batman and Robin kind of like screwed him. Like yeah. everyone's like, this is terrible. Yeah, Batman's, the worst Batman's movie got ever. nipples. Yeah, it's the worst movie ever. <laughs> it, Arnold's okay in it. Right? I mean, it's a bad, it's a it, bad movie. It's it's somewhat un- unredeemable. Yeah, Bane is just like he's like a comic book cutout. Not like, kind of, I'm Bane. I'm sorry, who? Bane. I was born <laughs> in the darkness. You merely adapted to it. And phone booth, which rules in eight million, which I still haven't seen. Yeah, I mean, we every every sixth episode that we do on the show, we talk about phone booth. And oh, and this other movie, it. it's about a drug dealer in New York. It's called Twelve. It freaking rocks. It's one of his last movies. I have not seen that either. Yeah. Uh, written by Peter Filardi. I think I mentioned before he did the craft as well. Yeah. We talked about Anything that. else or? I did not dig up a whole lot on him other than that. Got it. Uh, Kiefer Sutherland. As Nelson, Nelson Wright. Wright. Yeah. Divorced twice. Dad is Donald. He was roomies with Robert Downey Jr. in Hollywood for three years. It's intense. Can you imagine the amount of drugs they did? Yeah, they were intense. I can't did imagine. Did you ever get into 24? I've seen like a couple episodes. I never got into yeah. it. Yeah. It was like a cultural phenomenon. Yeah. Yeah. Well, people were all about them. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Bacon as David Labraccio. Oh, wait, we're not we're not done with Kiefer. Well, you paused for uh, like a minute and a half and said nothing and just gazed off into the future. So I didn't know, but continue. <laughs> he earned first place in the U.S. team roping championships. Oh, thank God we came back. His so name is the German that. word for pine and or jaw. He's friends with Wayne Gretzky. He's computer illiterate. <laughs> Isn't that random? That's he went random. to seven schools in 10 years. That's... His favorite, he likes soda. His car is blue. He likes soda. <laughs> Are we ready to go to Kevin Bacon? Well, what about his movies? Young Guns. Do his and... movies. Well, then, well, then don't tell me about how he likes soda. Talk about his movies. Three Musketeers, Dark City. Have you seen Three Musketeers? Yeah. Okay, I have not. Uh, Dark City is really good. Not seen it. It's like a precursor to The Matrix. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the Twin Peaks movie, Big mm-hmm. Big Lights, Bright, City, uh, Bright Lights, Big City. Mm-hmm. He's kind of Michael J. Fox's drunk friend. Yeah. And uh, Stand By Me. Stand By Me. He's right. awesome. Yeah. yeah, Ace. Yeah. Just evil. Yeah, you ever heard that fan theory that Ace from uh, <laughs> yeah. Ace from uh, Stand By Me actually becomes the character David. and David in yeah. uh, Lost Boys? Yeah, shout out Confused Breakfast. Yeah, we give a lot of love to them for their Well, they're wild entertaining. Theories. They, they know are. what they're doing. They are. Yeah. All right, Julia Roberts, or who are we doing next? I was going to do Kevin Bacon. Okay. But we can do Julia no, Roberts. No, let's do Kevin Bacon. Does he have the best pig nose of all time? Yeah, I have no nobody who has a nose like his. Yeah, it's like, well... A little oinker. 
He's got that greedy smile. Is that all you've brought on Kevin Bacon? No, I got. Okay. He, he's never lived in L.A., which is crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, he lost. He lost most of his life savings in the Bernie Madoff scandal. Really? Yeah, that is super random. Yeah, right. No, no wonder why he makes so many movies. Right. Yeah. He marries Kira Sedwick, uh, who was the closer. Is that the yep. show that she was mm-hmm. on? Mm-hmm. And they're on Instagram all the time. They seem like the coolest couple. Yeah, they're super funny. Yeah. He does. He. I appreciate that he unlike some other actors and actresses when they have their kind of seminal moment early in their career. Yeah. He's not afraid to go back and lean into it. Like he does footloose stuff all the time. Yeah. Like he'll make jokes about it. He'll dance the Jimmy Kimmel show. I think he was on that and they did the reenacted the entire dance. Scene. That's awesome. It's pretty funny. So he seems like he has a good, he's like a Donald Sutherland almost. He's yeah. there's nothing below for him. Like he'll get naked in hollow man. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, he, uh, he's flexed himself like, Quite well as yeah. far as being like you know the the good old boy to like a very dark evil character. Even he was in that X Men. I thought he was a Sebastian really good, Shaw. Yeah, he one of the best X Men villains of all time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and also I like Mystic River. He's the serious cop. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Wild Things. He's like Wild Things is so good. Oh my god, he's incredible. Yeah. Uh, by the way, there's a new Toxic Avenger movie with him and Peter Dinklage that came out in 2023. Really? Yeah. So uh, that's right up your alley. Yeah, I know. I gotta watch you it. You love the toxic event. Yeah, she's having a baby. Say it. Yeah. Oh, she's having <laughs> a baby. Tremors. JFK. He's the gay guy who's like really absurd. Uh, the Arab Bear is one of my favorite movies that yeah. no one saw. Yeah, nobody saw that. Yeah, the river. I didn't know he had two river movies. So Whitewater Summer and The River Wild. Yeah, I've never seen The River Wild. I haven't either. But yeah. I've seen the other one. <laughs> Where he, I made you watch it. That was a really strange movie. Super strange. Like you think they're gonna learn something and bond no, together. No. They just he ends up he being a psycho. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Was intense. Quicksilver is really good too. Mm-hmm. And Friday the Thirteenth was his uh, one his, of his, his one of his first movies. Yeah, and his first ever was uh, I mentioned it before Animal House. Yeah, yeah. We're a bacon first podcast. Yeah, yeah. We I really do like bacon. Them. Yeah. Uh, Julia Roberts, Doctor Rachel Manis, the most pretty girl of the eighties and nineties. Yeah, she does have this um. It, I'm gonna call it unconventional beauty. She's got but a mouth I'm, like a Clydesdale. Yeah, like that's wow. No, like in a good way. Yeah, extra teeth. It's, I'm sorry, lost my train of thought again. Unconventional beauty in that almost old Hollywood beauty. Yeah, like she's not when you look at the time and like the bleach blonde and the bodies and everything. She's more of like a traditional, you know, thick. <laughs> thick. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't know how to respond to half the things you say anymore. But that's not what I meant. Uh, she's a great actress. 10 pounds of oatmeal and a five pound Jeez. bag. <laughs> my only my only ding on her is is she ever not Julia Roberts? Uh yeah. When she I, I'm trying to think. So Mystic Pizza, she's like defiant and kind of like Julia Moody. Roberts. Okay. Steel Magnolias. Julia Roberts. Pretty woman. Yeah. Julia Roberts. Uh Sleeping with the Enemy. She's kind of like the Julia Roberts. You think so? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh Hook. She's Tink. <laughs> <laughs> But she's still like sassy Julia. Roberts. Like, I'm, yeah, like, she's I, always sassy. I'm not. I'm not telling you that she's not an amazing actress. Yeah. Um, Ocean's Eleven. I thought she was great, but she's definitely Julia. Roberts. But she's Julia Roberts. Yeah. Like, I'm not. I, I. By the way, I'm kind of picking. You know, pepper out of fly poop. Well, no, this is. It's like what or they fly say about poop out of pepper, whatever it is. Yeah, that, whatever the saying yeah, is. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like that saying. No. Yeah. Uh, Denzel is always Denzel. Uh, yeah. Get your hands off yeah. of me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, Billy Baldwin. Billy Baldwin. He's a vegetarian. Name all the Baldwins. Uh, Alec, Stephen, Billy, Daniel are the four actors. Yeah, yeah. There's six siblings total. I think there's a sister. Name one movie that each of the actors has been in. Okay. So Billy Baldwin, Fair Game. Oh, my God. I love Fair Game. Stephen Baldwin, uh, Usual Suspects. Alec Baldwin, Hunt for Red October. Daniel Baldwin? I've got the answer to the Daniel Baldwin one. He was in a Sopranos episode. No. We got to pick a movie. He was in a va- was he? he was in a vampire movie. Which one? Uh, the one with... Um, vampire in Brooklyn? No. Who's the... <laughs> that's amazing. Who's the Who's the dude who's always on South Park? At, or not South Park. On Family Guy as himself. That's the name of their high school. Is named after them. What? Adam West? No, not Adam West. <laughs> I cannot believe how shot my brain is sometimes. <laughs> Woods, something Wood. Oh, James Woods. James Woods. Yeah. Um, it's it's a vampire movie with James Woods and okay. Daniel Baldwin. Okay. <laughs> you don't know what it is? Do you? Look it up on your computer. I can't okay. remember the name of it. Vampires. Yep. So there you go. <laughs> 1998. I've seen it. It's good. Yeah, there's Daniel Baldwin. They save a hooker. <laughs> That's always good. So in this movie, James Woods 
is working with the Vatican yeah. to like hunt and kill vampires. Okay, so it's like Van Helsing kind of stuff. A little bit, yeah. except it's dirtier, sexier. <laughs> and they get like, and they they get like prostitutes all the time. And they fell in love with one. She got bit by a vampire, and it's it's very Daniel Ball. We do vampires, huh? <laughs> we do vampires on the Fox. <laughs> do a podcast. Our favorite vampires. The answer to that simple. Uh, I mean, who's the best? Jim Carrey. <laughs> <laughs> Once bitten. <laughs> Blade's the coolest. Yeah. He is. Yeah. Uh, who else do you want to cover? Bill Paxton. Yeah. Uh, Oliver Platt, who Oliver plays Randy Steckle. Uh, he's Canadian. Six foot three. He feels Canadian. He's cousins of Princess, Princess Di. Ooh. That's kind of cool. His dad was the U.S. ambassador to Pakistan, Zambia, and the Philippines. And his great-great-grandfather, Francis Eleanor Work. Work, yeah, that's his name. You better work. <laughs> was the heir to the maternal pork packing fortune created in Chicoli, Ohio, and a paternal dry goods and finance fortune created in New York City. His father was worth fifteen million bucks, and he went to Tufts. And I think I, I tried to do the math on it. I think he went to Tufts at the same time as my dad. Really? I wonder if he knew him. We should find out. Yeah, great question to ask. Oh. I have one other actor for you. It's uh, very rare that you find a child actor who has both played a terrifying monster and also the sweetest boy in the world. In this movie, there is a actor. His name is Joshua Rudoy, and he plays Billy Mahoney. Steve Gutenberg's son? Not from Police Academy. <laughs> Billy Mahoney is the kid wearing the red hooded sweatshirt that Kiefer Sutherland murdered when he was young, throwing rocks at him in the trees. Yeah, he's beating him up with a hockey stick. He is terrifying in this movie. Yeah. He's the only scary part of the entire movie is this yeah. like psycho kid who's chasing Kiefer Sutherland, trying to murder him. Psycho killer. Qu'est-ce que c'est? So let me tell you that... I immediately recognized him when I rewatched this, and mm. I was like, oh, he is the sweetest young boy in the world. He is Ernie Henderson from Harry Shut and the Hendersons. Up. He's the little boy with the glasses oh my God. in Harry and the Hendersons. Yeah. Same actor. I, I know that sometimes actors are in multiple roles, but I just thought it was worth pointing out. Devil, good guy. Yeah. And also the girl who played Winnie when she's older, Kimberly Scott. Yeah. She was in The Abyss as uh, Lisa One Night right. Standing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love The Abyss. Yeah. Have we done The Abyss? Yeah, we've done The Abyss. No, we haven't. We did. The, we uh, ranked our favorite sci-fi movies, and we talked briefly about The Abyss. I think we talked about James Cameron movies, too. I don't know, maybe, but we yeah. have, we've talked about it. We haven't done a full episode on The yeah, Abyss. Yeah, the ending leaves me wanting. Mm-hmm. It's like, I don't want peaceful aliens. I want yeah. to like, make our heads explode. Yeah. That's... Phew. Max, is there anything else you want to talk about with Flatliners? Uh, no. This is a pretty straightforward, like entertaining I would show it to someone, and I wouldn't be mad if they felt either way. Right. It's it's worth a watch, but it's not worth maybe podcasting yeah. about. Yeah, it's very – so, <laughs> so it, <laughs> it's interesting, though. This is the, like, 90s turn into a little bit darker, a little bit more, like, grunge Seattle. Yeah. Like, the world is not what you think. Like, yeah. the optimism of the 80s is a little bit gone. Like, yeah. even, even the doctors themselves, uh, like Oliver Platt saying, like – we can finally shove it in the boomers' faces that we yeah. have something. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's a group of people looking for their own voice. Yeah. yeah. And notoriety yeah. and fame. That was a, an interesting element of the movie, too. Like, this like need to be first to land on the moon. I, I, yeah. it, it's interesting because, like, I don't, that doesn't resonate with me at all. Mm. I, not once in my life, have ever been like, I need to do something that, like, is like that. I'm just, yeah, like, no, either, I, yeah. I, I've never felt that. And yeah. maybe that's a generational thing. It's just never been of interest to me to be a, uh, you know, a, a, explorer, a explorer yeah. or a conquer. So what do you think? Do you th- what do you think the rest of their lives were like? Do you think they wrote about this or actually talked about it no, even? No. Yeah. I think they all just quietly disappeared and they're like, hey, remember that time at the reunion? They're like, hey, remember when we killed each other? Yeah. It was great. And they're like, oh, no, it's good. It's good. Uh, all right, Max, why don't we take a break and slide on over to our Buzz in the Tower fan spotlight? Max, today's Buzz in the Tower fan spotlight is uh, seven degrees of Kevin Bacon's story, except Kevin Six Bacon's degrees. not involved, whatever it is. Um, so Craig is a huge fan of ours. Yep. Follows the show. Uh, he's from across the pond, if I'm not mistaken. He's definitely British. I'm not a sure little British? No. A little Cockney. Um, and he was supposed to be our fan spotlight, but he couldn't do it. So he threw his brother in. Yep. Who is also a fan of ours. And he lives in Livonia. Lives in Livonia, but originally from England or yeah. somewhere in that neck of the woods. Yeah. So we got a nice little accent running with us, and we got the brother from a mother of a fan of a lover. Yeah, sure. Play the game. He's got a great head of hair. There you go. That's all I needed to know. So I totally missed out what his name was. Uh, Dean. Dean. Dino. 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 Yeah. Dino Cicerelli. Yeah. The hockey player. Ah. ah I'm going to make a nice pasta. Anyways, uh, let's hear what Dino had to say. Hey guys, thanks for having me here on the Buzz in the Tower podcast for the guest spot in the episode of uh, Flatliners. But I just want to thank my brother Craig for trusting me and taking his position as unfortunately 
he was too busy to be able to record a segment as you fellas initially asked him to guest spot as he's a big fan of the podcast. He introduced me to the podcast as well. Uh, so I've got a lot to thank for him. Um, I really hope I do it justice because we both enjoy flatliners. And when he asked me to replace him, we went on a tirade talking about the movie for quite a long time. So yeah, I'm going to talk about why I believe Flatliners is a great movie in general and just the time capsule of the 90s. I think one thing that stands out about Flatliners to me is, of course, I saw it um, at too young of an age as to when I should have seen it in the first place. But it was the first one of the first movies that physically unsettled me in a psychological fashion. And that as a child or a kid, I guess, something I wasn't ready for, because most of the time as a kid, you're looking forward to seeing like monsters, demons and gore in, in the types of like horror films. But I felt like Flatliners was a movie that bridged realism and fantasy in such a way that it felt like it was possible in real life. And I think that's also what unnerved me as a child watching it. Nothing visually shocking about the movie, but more psychologically. And as I mentioned, as a child, that's something you're not prepared for, I guess. Of course, I made a point of rewatching the movie prior to recording this. And a few things that stood out for me was how much of a time capsule it is for the 90s, visually, stylization. On topic with visuals, uh, one thing that stood out when I was re-watching it that I never picked up as a child was a lot of the tone of a lot of the shots where the characters are talking about their past sins coming into reality. There's a cold blue overtone that Schumacher tends to use quite a lot. With the guys, it seems to always be blue. However, with Julia Roberts' character, it's always red, which of course I imagine is representative of the awful memory that she's bringing into reality. And when it comes to stylization, I, I think this is particularly Joel Schumacher. As he does it in Falling Down, he seems to enjoy representing architecture very well. As I found myself after rewatching it, taking in a lot of the background of the scene in general, there was a lot of beautiful shots where although you're paying attention to what's happening with the characters, you're also looking beyond them and kind of appreciating the setups in general. Two scenes that really stand out to me in Flatliners 2 when it comes to me feeling like it's a time capsule of the 90s and it's really good stylization is where Rachel's flashback shows the bullet hole through the windscreen with the crack and the blood. And there's that classic background zoom sort of out and the foreground zooms in. I think that's a personal one because that's something that Joel Schumacher also uses in Falling Down. It's just a visual that I love. It's obviously something used in Jaws very famously. And also the scene where they're sitting in the back of David's truck after Nelson has been resurrected from the dead. The whole look and feel of the street, the neon lights, the water vapor everywhere, the score that's going on in the background. That's one scene that particularly stands out where I'm click my fingers and I'm like, that's a time capsule of the 90s. It screams the 90s to me. Those are just a handful of things uh, about why I love Flatliners along with my brother. But also I want to mention one little fact about the movie Phone Booth. I never knew this, but my brother mentioned it to me that Kiefer Sutherland is in fact the voice at the other end of the phone that Colin Farrell is talking to for <laughs> the whole entire movie. That's one thing that I really enjoy about directors in general, particularly with Joel Schumacher, how he uses previous actors, particularly with these ones that are in Flatliners, along with Michael Douglas in Falling Down being a producer of Flatliners. I only recently found that out as well. All these little things, they just make me love the movie more. But yeah, I'm sorry I went on way longer than a minute than what you asked for. I hope this isn't too much, but thanks again and looking forward to listening to future episodes. That was a spectacular Buzz in the Tower fans. Yeah. Way. Better than us. He's Be than you. Yeah. Better than you. He's talking about like the closed zoom. Although I will give it the way the bullet comes out of the uh the car when the dad kills himself, mm -hmm. he would have to be sitting with his back to the the, the front of the front window. It's like a not because like, the it cracks the front window. I didn't pay attention yeah. as to whether or not it was possible or not. Yeah. But I get what you're saying. Yeah. It's, but I'm it's, sure there was some element. Yeah. But it's it's just better art. Back and yeah. to the left. Yeah. <laughs> back and to the left. Uh, it's funny because I, again, I think we were lukewarm on this movie and I, I really do like this movie. Yeah. I don't know what Max, I got to tell you, like listening to him, I'm kind of like, maybe I need to go watch it again. <laughs> I, mean, right man, now? I give all credit to anyone when you have a passion for a film I and mean, yeah. this is like you and, and Howard the duck. Yeah. When you have a passion with a film, that's like the biggest eye roll. Ever. It can, I know because it could be somewhat infectious. So like listening to him talk about it, I'm yeah. just like, maybe I'm missing something. I really like flatliners, but 
it doesn't it doesn't jazz me the way that I thought it would. But that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. It's okay not to love it's everything not all fault. the time. It's not, not you, man. It's not your fault. When can, when can we do Good Will Hunting? So that's that's a that's a lot. It's a big movie. Every time I give you a big movie, it's like at some point we got to do them. Do we? Let's keep things light. Good fellow. You're coming in here talking about Wookiees, and you want to start tackling Oscar award nominated hey, and winning movies. When we did Heat, I came in in a suit. You did. Yeah. You only wear about two of those a year. Yeah. Wed- <laughs> maybe three. A wedding, a funeral, and a podcast. No, no on one dies in my life, so. I'm That's good. good for you. You're yeah. not, and you're certainly going to deal well with that it's as that good, happens. It's a good day to die. Max, on that note, uh, that concludes our episode on Flatliners. A reminder to check us out on all podcast players Spotify, Apple, you name it, we're on it. Follow, review, subscribe, whatever they offer you should do. Uh, Buzzinthetower.com is our website, and patreon.com slash Tower is our Patreon. And all social media is Buzz in the Tower is our handle. Am I forgetting anything? I forgot our sponsor, 80stees.com. They are a proud sponsor of the show. And if you're looking for the most awesome and rad 80s and 90s movies, musicians, you name it, they've got the gear for you. So make sure you check them out. On that note, uh, the plan as it stands right now is for you and I to watch the new Beverly Hills Cop movie. You and might talk be very about upset, I'm, I, Max. I just <laughs> Eddie Murphy's track record. I really, if it's if it's anything like the sequel to Coming to America, I am going to be in. Who a, directed it? I'm going to be in a really shitty mood when we come to podcasts. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. Costa, you guys have bleeped that out, of course. Yeah. Uh, I don't care who directed it. I, I want to. I, I've purposely stayed away from it as much as possible, so huh. I can just go in there and try to appreciate it. But I'm done. If this isn't good, I'm done with Eddie Murphy. Like wow. I'm, I'm calling it. Saying something. I'm done. Yeah, yeah I've, I have hung on as long as I can <laughs> because the, if after this I hear like, oh, they're going to make a sequel to Trading Places, I will burn. I'll burn the world to the ground. That they can't do that. That movie's too perfect. Beverly Hills Cop. Yeah, that's true. Is pretty damn perfect. Yeah. Now the good news, what what Beverly Hills Cop has in their favor is that Beverly Hills Cop Three was a hot pile of steaming garbage. I never seen it though. It's. You have to watch it before yeah. you watch this one. Okay. So please go watch it yep. today. I will. And then throw up into your hands and then <laughs> rub it all over your face. All right. Uh, that all being said, Max, how do you want to end this show on Flatliners? Take me up to 93 degrees slowly. Inject one cc of adrenaline. And at one minute, Joe, you come in with a defibs and bring me back to life. Do you need any cc's of heat? Yes. Good. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>